important to research women in smoking because women face significant health disparities with regards to their tobacco use. What you find is that women are more likely to develop serious health consequences as a result of smoking. For example, they're more likely to experience cardiac disease and more likely to develop lung cancer when compared to men. Also, women are less likely to be able to quit smoking. So there's been national surveys that have been conducted every year for the last 50 years, and in every single year, women it's shown that women are less able to quit smoking when compared to men. Much of the research focuses on the benefits of quitting, so of course you're going to improve your health, you're going to save money, etc., but women acknowledge and experience significant risks associated with quitting. So they say, I, if I quit smoking, I'm going to be less able to manage my stress. I'm going to gain weight. And so if women do try to quit, these risks are also associated with less success in quitting smoking. So we've been uh, targeting these risks in terms of treatment development and trying to develop more effective treatments for women. It's important to do research on sex differences and gender differences in tobacco use and in depression because there are clear differences in how men and women are uh, able to quit smoking and how they uh, how often they experience depression and depression-like symptoms. There's double the prevalence of depression in women and therefore it's clear that having a basic science model of how that happens will point us in the direction of novel treatments and that interaction with smoking is something that is quite complex and one that really also impinges on how to help women quit smoking as opposed to men. We know, for example, that nicotine replacement strategies are much more effective in men than in women and we know that uh, there are novel treatments that also treat um, the uh, the affect of the, the depression-like symptoms that come along with quitting smoking, and that can help a, a physician choose which kinds of treatments are going to be useful for men and which for women. Osteoporosis is such a common problem in women. It carries with it a huge risk. Uh, women who suffer a hip fracture have about a 20 percent chance of dying in the first year after hip fracture. Nearly 50 percent of women over the age of 50 will have some sort of osteoporosis related fracture in their lifetime. And we don't really understand completely the factors that put women at greater risk. The work currently funded by Women's Health Research at Yale has broad implications most of the drugs we have now slow the rate of bone breakdown, but don't build up new bone. This work would open the possibility of a new way to treat low bone density. Millions of women in the United States already have low bone density, and we need better and safer ways to address that problem. Our center has emphasized the importance of studying women, the importance of studying gender differences, and we have tapped into a genuine interest in science in knowing more about women's health and gender differences. Improvement in the health and health care of everyone depends upon the translation of empirical findings into personal and professional practice particularly as we look ahead to the various kinds of hurdles that we face with regard to the health care of the nation. It's critically important that we start to infuse gender-specific medicine into our health care systems and take advantage of what we know to improve the health of everyone. <laughs>